Video number 10 is here, everyone. How is everyone feeling? Has this been helpful? Okay, you gotta tell me down below. You gotta tell me. Please subscribe, comment, like it, or just don't dislike it. I really hope you're feeling uh, more inspired, more ready to go, and more prepared for the next steps you'll need to take in order to become a marine biologist. That's the whole point. I really think it's important that kids don't get lost in what they think an, a marine biologist might be and instead figure out what their marine biologist in them could be and how they could apply their marine biology degree, how they could apply just their simple interest in the oceans, whether it be through science, great, we need more scientists, and we need more people, kids in uh, science, technology, engineering, and math in STEM, or is it more that you are gonna apply your interest in the ocean in some other form, in some other category. And in that case, you can still become a marine biologist in a way, and you can still apply your interests and make the oceans a better place through whatever talents or interests you want to use. That's really my point of all this, is that I really want kids to stick with their interests in the oceans and not to give up on their dreams of becoming a marine biologist, but instead to find what that means for you and either stick to your studies, stick to your science and go for it. And, and or Venn diagram <laughs> that, that you also apply your amazing talents and, and other artistic abilities or maybe your other interests and make sure that those overlap so that the oceans are still a big part of your life as you go through your career. That's the goal. All right, the last video, number 10 of the 10 part series of how to become a marine biologist is all about starting your conservation journey now. You don't need to wait to become a marine biologist to start helping the oceans. You can be and should be doing that now. One way people talk about saving the oceans is by bringing a reusable water bottle or a coffee cup. At this point, that shouldn't be a suggestion. That should be a rule. We should all be at the place now where we know that that's standard and should be happening. That shouldn't be a, like, oh, I forgot my water bottle. Whoops. It should be every day I'm bringing my water bottle. You don't forget your cell phone when you leave the house, right? And most of you have cell phones by now. You don't leave your cell phone at home. You most likely don't leave your keys at home. You should be bringing your water bottle just like you pack your key essentials, your keys, your phone, your water bottle, and or your coffee cup. It's a must do, but let's take it to the next level. So again, we talked about uh, doing shoreline cleanups. Those should be something that you're participating on a regular basis or leading a cleanup yourself, which is great experience and great resume building. For me, I heard about this new trend called plogging, which is uh, picking up litter while jogging. And it's a Swedish word, which means like plaga means to pick up. And so I got stoked on that idea and I was like, sweet, let's do it a 30 day challenge. And so every day for 10 minutes, I would go plogging. I'd go for a run and I'd pick up garbage as I went. And it was an amazing experience and it made national news because I was posting it on Instagram. So what are you able to do? What kind of 30 day challenge or maybe a one week long challenge that you can do either for yourself and don't tell anybody about it, or you can put on Instagram and make a big splash about it and encourage other people to do the same. July is normally plastic free month. And so maybe that's the month that you choose to try and use absolutely no plastic in anything you do. It's a challenge. It Plastic is everywhere and it's amazing to see how much plastic we is in our everyday life. It's remarkable. And eventually trying to get off of the plastic diet and trying to cleanse yourself of your plastic use is a great way to start conserving the ocean now and to being the marine biologist that you want to be. To conserve the ocean, do it now. Act now. So if you're in charge of your own groceries, then shopping more sustainably is something that you have, have control over. You can go to specific grocery stores and bring your own bags and bring your own Tupperware and ask to fill up the, the deli counter or in the bulk section to fill up your Tupperwares instead of buying products that come in packaging. Or you can go to um, amazing new grocery stores that are popping up across Canada that are waste-free grocery stores. We have one here in Vancouver called Nada and it's amazing. It literally has no packaging at all and everything is brought in from the supplier in bulk. So you have to come with all your containers and fill them up and then they weigh the container uh, full of products and then that's just you just pay for the weight of the food. It is so cool If you're not in charge of your own shopping cart and someone else is doing your shopping for you Then go with them ask them, you know Can we maybe do a challenge today where today's grocery shop will be as little plastic as possible? Bring as many bags as you can bring as many containers as you can and see what you can how you can make a waste-free meal for that day for that week for that month and see if you can support your parents or your guardians, whoever, in making those decisions with you and just try it out as a challenge. Just test it to see how it works and see how difficult it might be or how easy it might be and which items you can maybe start to swap out. Seafood is a big one in regards to shopping because buying sustainable seafoods 
is one of the best ways to help the oceans. Many of you know that OceanWise is a Canadian-wide program that gives restaurants and now grocery stores a little label next to each fish that they're selling, and it labels them as a sustainable choice. Looking for that label or only going to restaurants or grocery stores that serve OceanWise seafood, that in itself can be a huge changer for, for ocean conservation. So minimalism is a new and exciting trend that I am so on board with. Minimalism is buying and using as little as possible. As soon as I heard about the movement, I was like, I'm in. I feel like I'm already there anyway, but now I have a name for it. A friend of mine introduced me to something called Project 333, which means that you wear 33 clothes only for three months. As soon as I heard this, I ran home, I went through my closet, and I pulled out the main clothes that I normally wear because no, most of us have like, you know, the same pair of jeans and the same two or three tops and whatever. And so I put them out all on the bed and I count them all up and there was only 25 items there. And I was like, what? I have more choices now. I picked out a couple more and I completed my 33 items. And what I did was I took all of the clothes that weren't in that 33 and I put them in the top of my closet. I didn't discard them right away or donate them right away. I just put them up there and said, what? would happen if I just separated those clothes for the next three months? Will I find myself picking back through them and trying to find new items? And what I found was that of those 33 items, I didn't even wear all of them in the three months. Can you believe it? You think that you need way more than you do, and you don't. Go to your closet right now, pick out 33 items, and see if you can just wear those for the next three months. For me, when I heard about this in 2016, I haven't gone back. And I ask people like, do you know that I, do you notice that I am always wearing the same clothes? And they're like, no, I've never noticed. And I'm like, sweet, great, because it's been the same stuff every single day. So with the money that you save from not having to buy more clothes, you can donate it. Either you can donate your allowance, or if you are having a birthday or a celebration coming up, ask for money for your birthday that will go to an organization of your choice. That's a great way for people to not have to buy things and add to the garbage pile that you might get after your birthday. Uh, not only the wrapping and the packaging that your gifts come in, but the gifts that you might not really want or need. And instead, ask them to donate in your name to, or to, you know, to bring money, and then you donate that money to a nonprofit organization that you believe in. That's one way of holding a, a little fundraiser, or if you wanted to do it bigger, then even do a fundraiser for uh, a special run that's coming up in your area. So doing a 10K run or a 5K run, and then asking people to sponsor you uh, for a, your charity of choice, awesome way of raising money and making, uh, making a difference both for you and for the organization that you're supporting. One of the biggest issues facing our oceans today is climate change. So using less energy wherever possible is great. No matter where you live, if there's a way of kicking alternative transportation, which is mostly where we use our biggest bulk of energy is transportation, try and reduce that where possible. The next steps down are, of course, household energy use, cold water washes, turning off your lights, doing the dishes by hand, little changes that really help. Buying less and buying local, key ways of helping to reduce your footprint and reduce your consumption. Maybe you guys have heard of reduce, reuse, recycle, obviously the three R's, but there's a new R, it should be the first R, and it is refuse. Just refuse to buy new products, refuse to buy brand new things, uh, refuse grocery bags, refuse plastic straws, refuse a single-use coffee cup. Reducing your use of single-use plastics is of course a huge one. So that links back to plastic bags and straws, it links back to how you buy your food and the things that you're eating, consuming on a daily basis. Finally, when you're out on the water, reporting the whales you see and being a responsible boater are, are just common sense. If you're going to be a marine biologist and you're going to be respectful of the ocean, you need to be letting people know about the science that you can help with, whale sightings, cleaning up the beach as you go. Or if you're on a boat, then it's actually being a responsible boater. So slowing down when you see wildlife, uh, knowing where marine protected areas are. Do your research in advance of getting on that boat and going fishing so that you know exactly what kind of gear you need, what kind of fishing license you re are required, and how, you, how to do it sustainably. There's a really great list by the National Geographic on how to help the oceans, and I'm gonna link it here below because it's really important and it is ultimately the, the top 10 things that you need to do if you're gonna help the oceans now. Tell me below the thing that's gonna stretch you, the thing that is you're going to start doing but that you currently aren't doing. So maybe it's the 33 items in your closet, or maybe it's a waste-free week, or maybe it's going to sustainable seafoods only at the grocery store or at the restaurants. I'd love to hear what you're gonna do next to actually help make a difference now, to act now, and to start now in regards to helping the oceans and being the marine biologist that we all need to be.
not just people who are headed for a marine biology career, but for anyone in the world, we all need to be taking up these practices to be able to reduce climate change and to be able to reduce our plastic waste and to make sure that we actually have fish in the sea for future generations. So I hope this has been helpful. I am really excited to see what your responses are. I'd love to hear from you. I promise to have more videos coming up in the future, but for now, this is the last of the 10 part series of how to become a marine biologist. I so look forward to hearing from you and I wish you all the best on your career. Okay, talk to you soon in the next future series of videos that I create. Signing off. Okay, diver okay. Like the video, okay. <laughs> hey, no, drop it. The dog, I'm dog sitting, is trying to eat a bee. Protect the bees. Signing off. <laughs>